Yes, come in. Oh, you're the one that I talked to on the phone. Yes. Yes. Um, welcome to Ketones Collectibles. Um, I'm sorry it's such a mess in here. We've just opened. Um, I'm sorry about my accent. I don't really know where I'm from. Um, I've lived so many places. Now, you told me that you're on a budget, but you wanted to see some toys that reminded you of the era that you grew up in, which would have been the very tail end of the 70s, 78, 79, through the 80s, and into the 90s. But you're on a budget, so it can't be anything that's really worth a lot of money. Basically, you just wanted, wanted things to look at and collect just for yourself, not to resell later on. Is that correct? Good. Um, so basically right now, I've brought out some pop figure models that obviously they're not in boxes, but I've got, I've got the I've got other ones in boxes in the back. Um, yes, so I guess I'll just get started showing you what we've got. Oh, you're not allergic to cats, are you? That's good. Well, I mean, I don't, not, not like I roll these around on the cats or anything, but I do have two cats that I do let hang out in the store, so. There's also some construction going on here and here, so if we hear some noise, that's what it is. All right, so hopefully you recognize some of these, you know, we'll go over them. So let's start with the Fraggles. Do you remember Fraggle Rock? Good, good. Yes, it was one of my favorites too. Here we have Wembley Fraggle. He was kind of, he was the really nice one, you know. Oh yes, there's the construction noises. This, as you remember, was Moki Fraggle. She was kind of the hippy dippy peace love one. Did you watch the Fraggles on TV or on a VHS tape? When I was little, it was on HBO first. Um, my parents had one of those. Oh dear, I do apologize for the construction. My parents had one of those very large um, satellite dishes and it was right smack in the middle of our backyard. And every night, Looney Tunes would be on. And I'd have to get through the same damn cartoon almost every night, I swear to God, of Elmer Fudd trying to blow out a stupid candle so that he could go to bed. Every time he blew it out, it would light back up again. And he would, by the end of the cartoon, go crazy. It was awful. They re-showed it so many times. But when it was over, finally, they'd do the little, I don't remember what you called it, a bumper, um, an intro, a theme song. The little doo -doo 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 thing with the HBO letters like flew through space basically they did that and I get so excited because it meant Fraggle Rock was coming on anyway here we have Red Fraggle who was of course my favorite even though she was a bit of a pain in the ass to the others I think 
now red is for some reason they've covered her in a little bit of kind of felt feeling material so I think she's kind of a special edition now lay her down on her back because she doesn't like to stand up straight here we have Booba Fraggle even though red was my favorite I could probably relate to Booba more very neurotic um, afraid of everything yes Ooh, stand up Booba and then finally we had Gobo. I do not have Uncle Traveling Matt now, I'm afraid. I can try and special order him though, if you're interested. Now, to be honest with you, I kind of found, found Gobo a little bit annoying sometimes. But of course he was the hero of the show. I really wish I had Sprocket. I'm not even sure if they make one, but he was my favorite other than red, probably more than red actually. And then with each fraggle comes a little doozer. Now this is Cotterpin, probably the most well known of the doozers because we saw her often interacting with red. However, she didn't come with red. I can't remember which one she did come with, but I know it's not red. Okay. Um, well, let's stick with the 80s, because that was an 80s show. Now, being a child that was a ch little kid in the early 80s, at some point you probably saw Strawberry Shortcake. You might have had the bedspread, you might have had one of the dolls, you might have seen one of the cartoons. I had the bedspread, the cartoons, some of the dolls. I had a baby strawberry shortcake doll that when you squeezed its belly she blew kisses. And this actually does smell like strawberry, well, the fake strawberry smell, just like the dolls did back then. So, yes. Yes, that's one of the cats. Just ignore her while she eats. And with strawberry comes her little cat, Custard. So there's that. And if your parents let you when you were really little, you might have watched the movie The Gremlins. And even if you didn't when you were little, I'm sure you watched it a little bit later. Yes. Always a good one. The sequel get obviously not as good. Like, it was good in a different way. It was so horrible that it was good, kind of. It's just in a different realm than the first one not quite as bad as Troll and Troll 2 in different realms, but yes. So here's cute little Gizmo who, if you feed him or get him wet, you know, or at least feed him after midnight, he turns into something really scary. Alright, well, let's discuss two of my favorite men from the 80s. We've got Freddy Krueger and we've got Jason Voorhees. I'm sorry if you hear the water running from next door. The pipes are really loud. Now, Freddy has his little glove. Don't worry, it's obviously not sharp. And Jason has his little machete. 
I was always a bigger Freddy fan, and my sister loved Jason. Now, when I was younger, probably in junior high, my best friend and I watched all of the cheesy 80s and very early 90s horror movies. And it felt like we waited forever for a Jason vs. Freddy movie. Because I don't remember which movie it was. I believe it was probably one of the Jason movies that at the very end, Freddy Krueger's hand or his glove popped up and pulled Jason's mask down in the dirt, something like that. So we just assumed that eventually there would be a Jason vs. Freddy. Well, in 2003 it came out and honestly I was so disappointed when I watched it, but I guess that's what happens when you wait forever for something. But still, classic, classic movies, um, classic characters. Freddy, the, the second movie scared me because there was a, a scene where the teen was riding on the school bus and after the bus driver had dropped off one or two kids, all of a sudden they started driving really fast and zoomed right by his house. And then they turned into Freddy Krueger. So every time that I had a substitute bus driver and they went by my house without stopping in the afternoon, I'd get really nervous. So I didn't care for that movie. My favorite would be the third one, The Dream Warriors, which is kind of a cult classic-y type movie. The fourth one was kind of cheesy and horrible, but I loved it and it had... I don't know if you've ever played the game Night Trap from the very early 90s that had... Oh, what's her name? Oh no, I am having a brain fart. Oh, hmm. Dana Plato from Different Strokes. She was in it. They were basically hunting vampires and half vampires. Um, there's an actor named I hope that I'm pronouncing this right. Andreas Jones. I believe that's his name. Don't quote me. He was in that game. He also played a bully who bullied Screech on the very early Saved by the Bell called Good Morning Miss Bliss. Um, and anyway, <laughs> Long story not so short, he was in the fourth installment of Nightmare on Elm Street and he had a very famous, well, famous to me, <laughs> scene where he did karate moves to a montage to the song Anything Anything by Drama Rama and it was just awesome. Sorry, went off on a bit of a tangent there. Yes, there's dogs out there too. All right, sorry. Okay, so if you were a 90s Nickelodeon watcher, you would probably remember Rocco, the little wallaby, and his little dog, Spunky. Yes, I never thought about that either, that he's not wearing pants. One of my favorites was Doug. Now here, Doug is dressed like Whale Man with his underwear over his shorts. And here's his dog Porkchop dressed as Quail Dog. His little superhero alter ego on the show. I preferred it on Nickelodeon. I didn't much care for it when it went over to Disney, but to be honest, at that point, I was a little bit, it was out of my age range anyway, so, yeah. 
another 90s Nickelodeon show, Hey Arnold. This is Arnold, and this is Helga. Helga, who always acted like a little witch, but had the hearts for Arnold, but treated him like crap. I've just recently found out, and I feel really stupid, that this is not a kilt on Arnold. This is just a really long flannel shirt that happens to be hanging down beneath his little sweater or whatever. Okay, let's see. Oh, this was one of my favorites. Again, my parents had a giant satellite dish and we didn't have cable, we, we had satellite because cable didn't come down in our rural area. But I remember after school in the very early 90s, probably 93, 94, on the sci-fi channel, I would set the VCR, that's right, the VCR, to record Dark Shadows. Have you ever heard of Dark Shadows? Yes. It was really interesting to be watching a vampire soap opera that my mother had also watched when she was younger and would rush home from school to watch. But anyway, so I would enjoy watching the reruns. And after Dark Shadows, they would always have Mystery Science Theater 3000. And the reason that I loved this show is because it reminded me of school when the teacher would pop up a slideshow or she'd bring in the big clunky TV sitting on that long trolley and we'd watch a video. She'd flip off the lights and some smart ass in the class would Oh, that rhymes really good, doesn't it? Smart ass in the class would make comments to make us giggle as we were watching the TV or the slideshow. So, you know, when these two robots, Tom Servo and Crow, would sit in the little theater with Joel and they'd be watching a really crappy, like, Z horror movie, and they'd be making these comments, and I would be laughing. It's because it reminded me of that. I'm sorry that I'm going on and on about this. This could be going a lot faster if I didn't do that, I suppose. Then, of course, we have Sarah and Jareth, from the movie Labyrinth. I'd really like to get Hoggle. We've got E.T. Now, this, when did this come out? 1982 in the theater? I was only two years old, so I didn't see it until probably closer to when I was five or six. I remember being a little bit afraid of it. You remember when the Furby, this is a little off topic, sorry. You remember when the Furbies first came out in the late 90s and they were like this big thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I found an E.T. version. Yeah. And you could fly it around like this and it would say things like, Ooh, love to fly. And things like that. It was really weird. I kind of wish I still had it. Let's see. Oh yes. Pee Wee Herman. 
Today's secret word is fun. Yes, I loved Pee Wee too. Yes, it does sound weird to say that out loud. But I did. You know, and I still watch his Christmas, Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special every year because I have it on DVD. Then we have Data from the Goonies. I'm not sure what other Goonies ones they offer, but if you're interested, I can look it up. He was always a good one. You know, booby traps, booty traps, that's what he said. Now this was always one of my favourites. Rainbow Brights. And this was her little sprite. Oh, I cannot remember his name. But he's a little sprite. I had, I didn't have the Rainbow Bright doll. But I had the green one. And I don't remember her name. I don't know if I ever knew it. But I did watch the show, or the movies at least. But... I've noticed that, you know, they've rebooted a lot of these things and I've seen Halloween costumes for this quite often over the past 10 years. Then we have Venkman from Ghostbusters. I have heard that they are making another one, not a sequel to the female one, but like a third one for these guys but I'm a little bit confused on if it's going to center around them or or how it's going to work it's a little weird then last of all we have a, a couple of Star Wars ones I will be getting more in so I will let you know this is Lando Calrissian and he is a bobblehead this one's head's a little wonky, um, but don't worry, the one in the box is in perfect condition. Basically, most of the Star Wars ones are bobbleheads. This is Princess Leia. And then finally, we have Chewbacca. He was always one of my favorites. You know, obviously, these were more kind of 70s films, but it, they still feel very 80s to me. Well, okay, did you see anything that you were interested in? Okay. All right, good. Um, you know what, if you want to follow me out back, we can go check on everything out there. Um, we'll write down what you want. And then I can ring you up. Sound good? Awesome. Okay. Well, let's go do that.